if you have an intake uh, issue where you've got carbon buildup in your heat riser, which is the secondary smaller pipe on your intake, if you're still running the factory intake on your air-cooled VW, um, and you will know that, that you'd have a single carb in the middle, uh, not dual carbs, this doesn't apply to a dual carb setup. Uh, I have a manifold here, brand new manifold, should be very similar to what you would have on most air-cooled uh, Beetles um, that are single port. And on this one, I'll show you guys how I clean out the carbon buildup that you'll get on the heater, uh, the heat riser, which would be this smaller pipe in the front. Um, some of the symptoms you'll have is that on a colder temperature, where the temperature outside is nearing, you know, um, freezing, um, you could have some fuel icing issues um, that you would feel where the car would hesitate. It may want to stall because your fuel is actually freezing, going from the carburetor along the runner and into the cylinder. Um, and the job of this heat riser is to take exhaust gases and circulate them through this smaller pipe and then uh, as a byproduct of this pipe getting warm it will then warm up the intake runner next to it transferring heat to it um, and then keeping the temperature of the fuel and air mixture going through uh, high enough that it doesn't allow the fuel vapor to freeze. If it does freeze your car will stall uh, and then it won't start again until this has had time to, to thaw out. Um, I haven't had issues where it would freeze, but I don't really drive my car um, when it gets close to zero degrees or freezing um, outside. So, so that's some of the symptoms you may see. You could also see a symptom where you're driving on the highway and then again it has to be somewhat cold outside usually. You're driving around the town, there's no problem. You're driving on the highway for a longer period of time. You get off the highway and then the car wants to stall. Um, that could also be a, a indication that there may be carbon buildup in here. Um, one way to check is once your engine is running for a little while and warmed up, these pipes here should be very warm. Should should actually be difficult to actually touch um, these pipes over here. Obviously as it comes towards the center it will be a little bit cooler, but still should be very hot. Um, if you have the intake over here very, very ice cold, and this pipe here is barely warm or, or even lukewarm at that, you may start to have or you may have a blocked um, uh, passage in this um, in the secondary or smaller pipe over here which is the heat riser. Um, so now the only option you have is to remove the muffler which is not the goal of this video here but you would remove the muffler um, and then my way of cleaning it, which many people use a similar method, um, would be to, I use a, an old clutch cable um, that I sectioned up into various lengths. Um, the lengths that I use go from a short, which would be an 8 inch, roughly. Um, these are all arbitrary lengths, but these are lengths I've found to work well. So you would start with an 8 inch uh, long section. Then I have a 12 inch long section and then I would have a 43 inch long section on which I would have the threaded end on, on the longest part. Uh, and I'll explain why in a second. Then the final part you would have would be an 18 inch section and I'll also explain why this is a bit of a crucial one at the end of the process. So. That's, all these parts would come out of one clutch cable. So if you've got one broken clutch cable, and most VW owners would have one, because uh, they tend to break at some point, you want to keep that, and you could cut it up and put it away or keep it in one piece until you need to do an intake uh, heat riser cleaning um, on your car. So now, the process. Um, what you want to do is once you've unmounted your muffler, um, you want to check and see with some compressed air if you can blow air up one side of it and if you feel air coming out the other side. There should be no restriction in the flow. If you have some air coming through but very, very weak, it means that it's starting to close up, kind of like a clogged artery, and then you have very little passage left in here letting the air through. Um, if you have free-flowing air, then you don't have any issues. If you have no air coming through, then you're guaranteed that it's, that it's clogged up. 
So once you've determined that, once your muffler is off and you've determined that, um, the next thing you're going to want to do is, obviously I have the intake off here, but you would have it in the car. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to start with the shortest one and then you're going to introduce the shortest one through the passage and you're going to work your way up around the curve over here. So you're going to notice you're going to have one bend and two bend. If you've got carbon build up here, it's going to be very hard to go through here. Um, so what I do is I will use a drill and then you'll put one end into the drill like so. Tighten the drill down and then you're going to spin it. Now, when you spin it, you want to make sure that you're spinning this cable in the direction of the winding so that this cable doesn't undo itself as you're spinning through. So if that's clockwise or counterclockwise, that's for you to determine. You ideally put it in clockwise so that the winding is also clockwise and you feed it then into the intake as you go through and that's what happens if you go in the wrong direction, okay? So you want to be careful not to do that. So you're going to go in an opposite direction to that if that happens to you. There you go. All right. So now, if we go through in the right direction, now what happens, you see how easy I go through. Okay. So now, my, 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 my cable has gone through this section. And I'll work this back and forth. And if this is clogged up to here, you're going to want to peck at it until you, break, until you break through that initial clogged area. If it goes through easy, you may be just, you know, cleaning the walls of the, of the, of the pipe out, which is fine. Then you want to move up to the next uh, longer one, which is going to be your 12 inch. And then you're going to now do the same thing, but this time you're going to go a bit further. And then at that point, the first one will bring you to about the first curve. Second one is going to bring you more closer to the, to the center over here because this area is usually the worst part. Somewhere around here is where you have most of the clogging. So you're going to peck at it, peck at it until you finally break through. And then once you've gotten this one as far as you can go, which is almost halfway, then you're going to go the same from the other side. Okay? You're going to repeat this process until you get through. Once you've done your best with the 12 inch long piece or you know you can choose your lengths as you wish. This is what I've found to work well these steps. So you can start with 6 inch or, or 9 inch whatever and then your next piece could be 12 or 15 inch whatever you find is better for you. But I find that going with too long a piece in the beginning will make it more difficult for you to break through that carbon. So now once you've gotten that done you can then step up to a larger one and now it's going to be really trying to ream out the area here, which is really the worst part. And then you want this 48, 43-ish inch long one to go in one end, ream out, and then come back out. And I tend to run it as it's going through and just keep, keep going for a little while to break up. Now what you want to do, and you'll see in the next clip on the car, is that as you're doing this, as you're pecking at it, and as you're trying to break through, take out your cable and run some compressed air to try and blow that, that broken down carbon out. There will be some that, are, that will fall out with the movement of the cable. But you want to try and clear that out as you go so that you're, you're, you're emptying out that area and leaving you more room to break up more carbon. Once you've broken through, you want to try and blow air from one side to the other back and forth a few times to again empty out as much as you can and then repeat the process with the cable. I've seen some people actually drill holes, cut holes onto the side here to avoid this first section. And this first section really isn't that bad most of the time, but it's not worth, the, the bit of time you'll use, with, you'll do with a short one, to me is not worth drilling a hole and then patching it and everything um, uh, into, the, uh, into the heat riser. So start off with the short one, medium, and then the long one. Make sure that then you're, you're, you're checking how much airflow you have. You should have unrestricted airflow once it's cleaned out. Will it be 100% clear? Look, you, you can't really see inside, but you'll have an idea based on the airflow you're getting through your compressed air going through. If you take the intake off the car, you can do the same process 
And the only additional step I would do is that I would get some sort of carbon engine decarbonizing product. They have a lot of chemicals out there to, to help break up carbon in a motor, uh, which don't really seem to be very effective running through a motor, but you could, you could run some in here, let it sit overnight, or let it sit for a while. It may soften up the carbon and allow you to get that chiseled out with these cables much easier. I haven't ever used the product because I've only done it when the, when the manifold is inside the car. So once you've done these three steps, the final cable here, which is about 18 inches long. So what did I do with this one? Uh, I unwound it, meaning I spun it the wrong way so that it unwinds itself and I'll zoom into it in a minute. And then I rewound a little bit, making it more aggressive at the end. And then what I use this one for is like a final cleaning. Once you've cleaned everything through, based on the length of this one around 18 inches, this guy will get you past the center line of that pipe. So you can go in from both sides and kind of do like a scrubber uh, action with this last one. Okay, I'll give you a zoom on this uh, in a minute. So that's basically how I would go about cleaning the, uh, the heat riser on this manifold. And it's really important that whenever you service, you take the muffler off, you change the muffler, you're doing anything that, revol that involves dismounting or opening up this joint. Um, important to check that because it may be just starting to build up carbon. Um, some of the reasons people say that it builds up carbon could be that your motor's uh, either not tuned well um, and it's burning a lot of uh, uh, carbon through, heat, through the pipe. Obviously, it's picking it up from your exhaust gases. Um, you may be having a, a motor that's got a lot of mileage on it, it's worn, you're burning a lot of oil, uh, things like that, that'll, that'll clog this up quicker. Um, otherwise, I mean, that's, that's really the most important part of it. You really want to make sure if you're running a single carburetor on an intake like this, that you have this passage cleared up um, and, and you make sure that it's, it's operating properly especially in the case where you're doing a motor rebuild or anything like that. If you have an aftermarket muffler, sometimes it's a, a little different regarding the way the muffler is designed and the flow. Um, you want to make sure that uh, if someone else has installed that muffler for you, you may sometimes need to drill out this part uh, that, that joins up to here in the muffler, which is blocked off from the factory on those aftermarket mufflers, um, and make sure that it's actually working, because just because it's bolted up doesn't necessarily mean that someone's taken the time to drill out the passage in the aftermarket muffler to have it run the heat through. Another thing that I've heard is that when that's the case, some people will make one hole bigger than the other to try and have a unidirectional flow which is in theory how the manufacturer Volkswagen did it originally on the factory muffler. It's uh, more of a one directional flow, whereas if you have the, both pipes about the same size, uh, it's kind of just like a, a bit of a, a turbulent flow, so you may have a bit more chance of it having some carbon buildup. But that's the theory. I don't have anything to back that up. Um, so yeah, so now let's go take a look at the same process. Um, that I did in the car and you can see some of the carbon actually flying out when I hit the air uh, on the other side and uh, and yeah so hopefully hopefully this gives you guys a hand to uh, to free up some of that carbon in those heat risers and it may be something that you guys want to definitely consider if the car is running poor as you're getting into more of a spring and a fall you know just close to freezing you know a couple of degrees above freezing temperatures uh, when you're running your Volkswagen so let's take a look at some of the uh, in-car shots uh, of, uh, of this. So here you can see how the end of it looks compared to normal. So this one I would use at the end just to scrub it out. And that's the regular one. good is that we have air. I'm using compressed air from one end to the other. That's a test you can do if you take your exhaust off is you want to put some compressed air in one end and you should have air coming out the other end. On this one I had no flow through it and I had to uh, had to clean it now. You've got the carbon cleaned out 
you can now go ahead and put all your your muffler back on uh, and then make sure that the port over there is clear usually is put the muffler on you know okay so that's it for this one guys I'm gonna get back to work on the 66 doing a little bit of uh, of improvements over here you'll get to see what's going on in another upcoming video uh, you know we're, we're doing stuff stuff's happening so it looks worse than it is but uh, you'll see in another video coming up so thanks for watching I really hope this kind of stuff helps you guys out um, I know that it, when I started working on these cars I did a lot of research on certain things I didn't know about and it always helped me to find some kind of video or some kind of uh, some kind of a website or a blog or something that gave some tips and answers if you guys have anything specific that you'd like me to cover something that you'd like me to try and explain that I may know I don't know everything for sure ask my friends they'll tell you but uh, drop a comment let me know if there's something that you guys want me to cover let me know if you would do this a different method or if you've ever done it the same way that'd be kinda cool to know too leave a comment I try and answer every single one we try and bring you a video almost every single week maybe every second week sometimes every second month but you know we do the best we can so Thank you for subscribing, thanks to all our new subscribers, and we'll see you on the next one. This was a Wolfhouse Motorworks presentation. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell.